Welcome to our coverage from Bioprocessing International European Summit here in Vienna. A lot of the talk in the industry right now is focusing on the facility of the future and what that may look like. We've asked a couple of the speakers at the conference what they see as the progression of today's facilities and what they may look like in the near future. Yeah, because I've been to a few presentations and obviously whenever I see or hear anything, they keep talking about ballroom concept, which is quite interesting. But then obviously so many supplier companies are coming up with quite a lot of different solutions right now, which is quite interesting. And just a few, uh, like, um, I don't know, exhibition I saw um, was quite interesting as well. But mostly, like, ballroom concept was still quite new to me, so it's quite interesting. Um, so the ballroom concept is quite, from my understanding, it's like a modular facility. So basically, rather than having a many different room, which can do only the specific things, it can be a wide open space with the segregated instrument which can run the whole process which is really interesting concept and especially when you go to the continuous processing if you do think about perfusion like a bioreactor for example you need a lot of media <laughs> so even just to think about where you store all those media is quite a big challenge and also if you do the continuous downstream process like you need lots of buffer so where do you make it where do you store it but when you do like a ballroom concept it all becomes a little bit more integrated so i think one of the key words in the industry is people are looking for harmonizing approach or integrated process which i find very interesting obviously people are still talking about challenges in terms of cost so that's where we come and support people because they obviously want to find out what's the cost implication of it and at what scale it makes sense and at what scale it doesn't really make sense anymore. So it's obviously coming down to the cost and also the safety aspect of it. So I'm sure regulatory have a lot to talk about and unfortunately I'm not the regulatory expert. But yeah, I think it can be the future of the facility, yeah. Well, if continuous processing continues to expand uh, in our tool chest and, and is used for more and more drugs, that will uh, probably reduce the size of our facilities because, as you know, uh, you don't have to scale as far in continuous manufacturing. A uh, smaller system run, running continuously can, can produce as much as larger systems that are running in batch if they're run long enough. So the logic there is that the facility then would, would not have to be as large. We would not have to store such large volumes of media and buffers uh, to, to produce continuously. Um, I think up till now it's really been based on stainless steel, so people will have uh, huge stainless steel facilities. Um, the trend has been away from that, so we're wanting to have a smaller manufacturing footprint and that really requires you to have multi-use facilities and those multi-use facilities to be single-use, so using a lot of the plastic wear and things like that to do that. So um, I think in the future you're going to have smaller footprint facilities, lots more single-use and I think we're going to have them global, so they won't really just be on one or two sites around the world, you'll have 20 or 30 perhaps. I think economics would say that on one side you would think that it would be more economic to have one single manufacturing site to supply the world. Um, but I think politically around the world, countries are trying to encourage a local development of biotech or drug development, and so they want that to happen in their, their own space. Countries like Brazil, they've put into law that you must actually have the manufacturing in that country. So that's really encouraging co uh, companies to actually have these small manufacturing sites in that country, so therefore it's going to be a global thing. So I think you're right, economically it should be one manufacturing site, but I don't think it's going to work out like that. I think everyone wants their own piece of the action. It's, it's, it's not going to be a pyramid, it's going to be much, much more spread out globally. I think we'll, we'll see that Asia is going to be big, South America is going to be big, and of course Europe and North America will drive it all through as well. So um, I think we'll see these opportunities all over the, all, all over the world, really. So first of all, of course, it's uh, this uh, virtual, virtual reality you have seen probably on our booth. So you can uh, design your own uh, solution on a, on a screen. Then you go, uh, uh, take the Google Glass, put it on, and you can go 
uh, inside the room and check the dimensions, for example. So it's really an innovative tool, uh, and with this you can easily see, for example, a 2,000 liter bioreactor you would never see in reality because it's so heavy and nobody will transport this normally from, from America to Europe or back to China and so on. Certainly one of the most interesting concepts to come out of the conference was Power Life Science's vision of a 3D printed facility, making full use of virtual reality. But what do you see as a facility of the future? Let us know via social or on our website, we'd love to hear your opinions. Make sure to check out the website in the link below to watch all the highlights and more interviews from this year's conference. And we look forward to seeing you next year in Amsterdam.